look, John, if you want to be back, if you want to be part of something that I am going to run and, and we're going to get this done and we're going to figure this out and you're not going to be a guy who, who's on the cusp of the playoffs for the, for the next six years, you're going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I guarantee you that he told him that, number one, he's going to be one of the top paid players in the league. Number two, that he's going to get him to the playoffs. I guarantee you that Lou Lamarillo told him this. Well, because did. Lamarillo does not want to be the guy that Islander fans can look at and say, yeah, that bum from the Devils lost our best player. No, and that's a good point. That's a, Absolutely has to be the way it is. And I think he has something to prove, and I think uh, the Islanders are the perfect team to prove it to. <laughs> talk about a, talk about a, a, a team that uh, where, where the fans have basically been beaten in the submission over the last decade by the ineptitude of Garth Snow. And, yes, and yeah. the other thing, and I said this a week ago when we were talking about this, is if, if Garth Snow had any kind of pride at all, he'd just resign. I don't know why he hasn't in, in the week, unless he's going to do it after the draft. Maybe, maybe they, they told him, say, look, all this draft preparation is done. The draft's in a couple weeks. Right, right. So, you know, he's, he's done the work. So keep him on. And who knows? Maybe give him a bonus or something. When when? But I mean, anybody who is a professional in professional sports, the the, the the next move is obvious. You resign because this is now the guy who's making decisions. So what are you going to do? You, if Garth know now, all he's going to be doing is pushing paper around. Probably. You going to do that for another four years? Yeah. I mean, he, he probably should, but negotiate a buyout and leave. That's the yes, right that's, move. I agree with that. He should negotiate a buyout, take the money, say, take care. I'm going to go away for vacation. He's, he's stolen money for a decade. He has. So take take whatever buyout they'll give you, negotiate it, get it done, and, and, and just walk away. Quickly, hockey. Uh, we should say it's the Capitals versus the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, series starts tonight in Las Vegas. I kind of thought we might get a call from D.C. Drew today. Yeah, D.C. Drew, yeah. So he, he cares about the... The Capitals, we know that. But, he's a hockey guy. Uh, yeah, he's not a hockey guy. He is. He is. Anyway, uh, two teams I, I'm not happy about. <laughs> so I don't want the well, Capitals. It's great. it's great. I don't want the Capitals. And I, 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 and I, and I the Vegas Golden Knights, come on, first season? Some, I like the stories. I, I like here, the story. It's the a good story, story. The stories are there. The markets might not be there, but the stories are there. The yeah. Capitals have not been in the Stanley Cup Finals in 20 years. Yeah. 20 years? That's a long time, especially especially with the with, with the teams that they've had. They've won a couple of President's Trophies. Yeah, I know. They should Over have the, won a In the last of five years, they've won at least two President's Trophies as as the best team in, in, in hockey in the regular yeah, season. Most points. That's why you get the President's Trophy. Yeah. And they don't, they don't make the finals because the Pittsburgh Penguins keep eliminating them. That's good. So they finally got past the Penguins. It was a miracle, but they finally got past the Penguins and got to the final. And now what's looking at them? And, and everybody says the same thing. Oh, the expansion team. Well, it's not really an expansion no, team it's, anymore. It's, no, it's, <laughs> I, and I agree with that. That's maybe what bothers me a little bit. It's not an expansion team. It's not. But it is. You, no, I know, but it's not like the you know the 62 Mets or the 72 Islanders. You know? uh, uh, George McPhee, the Vegas Golden Knights GM, put together an exceptional team. He did. I'm not saying, I'm not saying he didn't. So to, to, just, to just dismiss them as, well, they're not an expansion team because they're not awful. Yes, yes. Hey. Good job, George McPhee. If he's not the NHL Executive of the Year, I don't know who is. He will be. We're going to take a break right now. You're listening to From the Press Box right here on 90.3 WHPC. Give us a call at 516-572-7440. Frank Sinatra. Bing Crosby. Ella Fitzgerald. Dean Martin. Hey, guys. What are you doing? We're making a list of artists you don't hear on the radio anymore. Wait. I know where you can hear all of them and more. Where? Right here on Standard Serenade. Join me, Glenn DeMilt, for two hours of great songs by the great stars. Saturday afternoon at 5 on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. 
Shake off the realities of the day, broaden your musical horizons, and embrace the diversity every Monday afternoon at 6 on Revelations. The show offers a potently unique collection of music with an emphasis on themes and rock rarities, an occasional tour de force of blues and soul mixed with compelling sets of folk and folk rock. I'm Steve Kay, and I've got the perfect soundtrack for your drive home every Monday afternoon at 6 on Revelations, right here on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Come on, everybody. Let's sing along with Bruce. Join me, Kim Tracy, for the music of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band on Thunder Road, Sundays at 1 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC and on the iHeartRadio app. We're back here on From the Press Box. I'm Rob Leonard. He's Tim Leonard. Talking sports every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And uh, we covered the Islanders, covered Stanley Cup Finals. Um, should we go basketball or NFL, brother? Basketball. Basketball. I thought LeBron James wasn't supposed to get to the finals. Who said that? Some people. Some people. Some people are stupid. I thought Tim Leonard might have Some said that. Some people are stupid. No, oh, no. Tim Leonard does not go against the king. Because sure? to beat the king, to be the king, you have to beat the king. I thought, that, and LeBron is the king. Well, we all. I think we both agreed that we thought Celtics were going to go to the finals. I, I would never have said that. You really? Okay. No. Okay. And and the reason so. being, if you say so, the reason being, the Celtics are still very young, and I, I'm not going to go against LeBron James. For a team that I think is is a still a, at least a year away, and, and b has some flaws of its own, plus plus the injuries. The Celtics don't get me wrong. The Celtics are going to be a great team. Gordon Hayward missed the entire season after after that that disgusting broken ankle in 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 uh, what was the exhibition season or the first game, whichever it was. But Kyrie Irving was also injured for the playoffs. I mean, and and, and really like the last what fifteen twenty games. Right. So. They're going to be better. And Jason Tatum certainly is, is a star in the making. As much as I hate to say all this about Boston, but Danny Ainge has done a nice job of putting the team together. You know, I wish I wish the Knicks could have pried him away from Boston and he could have brought, you know, six or seven of those draft picks with him. Yeah, but unfortunately. But right now they are still a team that has some flaws and, and the injuries are part of that. And LeBron James did what LeBron James does. Even though Kevin Love wasn't there, I mean, you, you think about this: the Cavaliers without Kevin Love, their second best player, quite possibly, is J.R. Smith. Now, Nick fans right now are, are, are retching because because they remember J.R. Smith and what a horror show he was, yes, he and, was. and how he just liked to randomly chuck shots, and, and just because he felt like it, it no flow in the offense whatsoever. Um. But J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson. Game five with the Rockets, I saw a lot of chucking, too. So Well, but that's... Chris Paul did a shot in the fourth quarter. I'm like, was that a practice shot? Was that's, that an after... that's how a lot of them seem. It was, was that an after a whistle ch- chuck just to see if it goes in? LeBron had a couple of those last night, too. But oh. except, except one of them actually went in. And, and, and here, here's the thing. Number one, the Cavaliers played, I thought, outstanding defense last night. Right. Um, and, and that was something they had to do because they were playing in Boston. This, this, that was the other part of this that Celtics fans were, well, game seven, it's in Boston. We're going to win. No. LeBron. It's LeBron James. All right? And, and so many people today, it's all this nonsense about, well, he's the greatest player ever. Uh, but I hate that stuff after a big game like this. You know, and, there's, and they're like, well, Michael Jordan and LeBron's better. Who cares? Who cares? Whether it's 1-2 or 2-1 or whatever. Right. Michael Jordan, one of the greatest players ever. LeBron James. Is there, is there any, any doubt about that? LeBron James, one of the greatest One of the greatest ever. players ever. Enjoy the fact that yeah. you're getting to watch the guy. Enjoy the fact you got to watch Michael Jordan, assuming you're old enough and, and you actually could. But to sit here and argue about this nonsense about, well, who's the better player? Who cares? I LeBron's know. still playing. I know. And, and to say this after 
He he go he, he went off last night. Thirty five points, fifteen rebounds, and nine assists in an eighty seven seventy nine game. LeBron James had had thirty five points and nine assists. That shouldn't even be possible. But that is the kind of impact. And played forty eight minutes. Forty eight minutes. Nobody plays forty eight minutes anymore. He had to play forty eight minutes. Play 48. They couldn't sit him down. No, because what are, what are the Cavaliers going to do? Who who's going to get the ball when LeBron James is on the bench taking a blow? I agree. Nobody. No one. <laughs> it's turnover waiting to happen. He uh, you can't do it. He, but he's the t- it's the type of thing where you have to you know become the guy, and he already is the guy. But, he is the guy. But it, you know you can't not play forty eight minutes in, in game seven, game six maybe, but game seven now you have to play. I don't so. even know how many minutes he played in Game Six, but it probably it probably was close to forty eight. But Kevin Love out because of the concussion protocol. He 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 suffered some kind of concussion, or pretty early in Game Six. And again, I mean Tristan Thompson is the only other quote unquote real player. Otherwise, you got J.R. Smith, you got Kyle Korver, you, you you got a bunch of guys that are in, in baseball terms would be replacement level. These are not these right. are not title winning guys without LeBron James. So it's like you know it's like Steve Kerr when Steve Kerr was playing for those Bulls teams. Steve Kerr, nice outside shooter, but was he the reason the Bulls won all those titles? No, nope. he was along for the ride. Right, make a three every once in a while, Steve. We'll keep you around. But you know you know what you, a guy like Steve Kerr is. Um, well, now he's a coach. Well, he is. <laughs> but but what 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 he does though is he occasionally takes the, the spotlight off of Michael. So. Then the spotlight can then go back on him again. So right. if, if it's just Michael, 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 then it's you know they know not to cover a guy like Steve Carr. Marsha, so. Marsha, 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 Marsha. But so. that you know you're, you're looking at, at at guys here here. Um, what we got? Oh, um, and Jeff Green. That's the other guy who I forgot last night. Who actually put in a nice effort. 19 points for Jeff Green. 19 points, eight rebounds. Nice to have that veteran presence. And and Jeff Green, a former Celtic, so that made it even better. Uh, but that was. That was basically the Cavaliers last night. LeBron thirty five, Jeff Green nineteen, and then and then uh, J R Smith had twelve. And that that that's your game. And you look at the Celtics, and and Tatum had uh, I can't even read this. My eyes are going twenty four points, but he he at one point Tatum dunked on LeBron, and this was after LeBron had had blocked a dunk attempt by a couple of minutes earlier. By I think it was Terry Rozier, um, and then turned and and like bumped into LeBron, gave him gave him like a chest bump, but not right. not you know the chest bump is a celebration. He was just bumping to LeBron to say you know I'm still here, twenty years old, punk, go away. Are you kidding me? Nice uh, moment after the game, LeBron LeBron gave him a big hug and right. probably whispered something in his ear like you know your time is coming, young man, but it ain't now. It ain't now. By the way, I'm looking at game sixes of. Box score, 48 minutes for LeBron. Crazy. Uh, 46, 46 points. Crazy again. <laughs> I'm sorry, 46 minutes, 46 points. Uh, he had, uh, what, how That's many? That's crazy, 46 minutes, 46 points. He had uh, how many rebounds? 11 rebounds. Yeah. So That's, and that's, and that's I I was going to say, I, I think, I'm pretty sure I saw when when he those two minutes were that he took a blow because it was, it was right before halftime. And, and he went and sat, and he was like, all right, I'm just going to take this because take those two minutes, go into the half, yeah. and, and get himself a little bit of an extended rest. But, again, I mean, there was no time for him last night because the Celtics took a pretty big lead early. They were up by by 12 or so in the second quarter. And the 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 Cavs battled back. They finally took the lead. And, and this was a series where I want to say last night when – the Celtics actually came back in the fourth quarter, and there was a lead change. And Mike Breen said it was the second lead change in the fourth quarter in the entire series. Wow! So there were a lot of one-sided games, and a lot of ga- a lot of these games have been decided in the first quarter because one team or the other had double-digit leads in the first quarter, and that has been what established each game. Right. Last night was the first quote-unquote real basketball game that we saw that went back and forth, where both teams had runs. Instead of first, you know, first quarter, one team is up by 15. It's like, okay, next, you know, let's play this out and next game and see what happens. Mm. So that's where that's where things were last night. Great game. I, I mean, I watched I watched the entire game. Uh, the one one call that that infuriated me. 
late in the game, LeBron is coming down on a breakaway layup. And a Celtics guy, and I don't remember who it was, grabbed him by the shoulders. Two hands, one on each shoulder to try to stop him. And no flagrant foul is called. I couldn't believe it. Well, I could he, not did he believe fall it. backwards. I guess. Hey, I mean, the, the, you're telling me that it's not a flagrant because LeBron oh, I, I is know, strong enough. I, I know it's a fl- flagrant. It should have been. But but the way they usually look at it is if he falls backwards and almost kills his head. Absolutely. Re- 